Hello beautiful beloveds, this is Stephanie Parasha coming to you from New Zealand Aotearoa with a latest update. My sincere apologies for the big delay in between my last recording and this one. I have actually recorded several uh, messages for you and even uh, made videos and for some reason obviously the universe isn't lining up. <laughs> These messages have not been able to get through to you and also I have been in a deep process as well which I will share with you about some of the learning that I've gained from being in this process. So it's also been I guess kind of through the integration period of the process uh, bringing something into clarity for the learning and uh, for our understanding is, is sometimes quite hard when you're in the middle of that process. So there seems to be quite a theme going on and I hear uh, other Twin Flame uh, teachers and guides and, and other people that are uh, explaining their journey going through something really similar. So I am just going to give you my take on what I've been going through and the learning that I've been doing and hopefully uh, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, pretty aware that many of us are on the same journey. We're doing this all together so when we hear that others are also doing the same work it gives us great comfort and confirmation that we are on the right path, that we're not lost, we're not going crazy, we're not losing losing ourselves or you know anything like that. We're actually very much on mission uh, and when I say that I, I actually get really big goosebumps so that's why I've called this uh, update transmission because we are transcending or we're transmuting and we're trans we're doing a lot of transing <laughs> transiting as well uh, through on this mission currently um, I, I'm kind of going to use an analogy because I find metaphors quite handy for people to understand the process so uh, more recently I have been involved with a divine masculine that has been uh, you know, I don't want to use too many definitions and get hung up on those words and definitions, but pretty much I would have to say I, either a karmic partner or a uh, possible another catalyst twin for me to uh, to do my work and to prepare me for uh, yeah for this mission. So basically, uh, uh, what that what it, that involved has been bringing up huge amounts of wounding and pain. Uh, and I'm like, ah, oh, again, still more of this, uh, you know, but I I agree, I did sign up for this, I put my hand up and said, yes, I'll come to earth, and I'll be a light worker, and I'll help clear away, so I'm very much part of a clean-up crew, so the clean-up crew uh, pretty much have been in the last month or so, very much getting our hands dirty, uh, fully immersed in the depths of uh, a lot of the murkiness and the heaviness and the harshness of the human emotion, emotional realm. So uh, basically plunged into what I've been calling the canyon of codependency, uh, the, you know, doubt, traveling down jealousy lane, um, going along attachment alley, um, you know, going into the pits of the despair of loneliness, of longing, of unworthiness, of quest deservedness, drive, you know, like going down all of those alleys and caverns and caves and pathways to uh, pretty much to clear them out, to make sure that you know, we, th these pathways are clear because we are going, we have chosen to go first. Uh, I have signed up as a transmuter of energy. So when part of my role as a light worker is uh, that I've agreed to sort of take on a little bit extra as well because I thought I was, you know, a tough warrior. But sometimes when uh, I, I get slammed and I can get really hit by a lot of these energies myself and go down quite hard, and uh, you know really have to pull out those spiritual tools and techniques for uh, for transmutation and you know remembering not to get bogged down even further in in those states uh, by sort of further annihilating oneself by judging 
um, you know, judgy, judgy for being in that place. Like, you know, I, I'm the first to go, oh no, haven't I done my work? Aren't I pure and enlightened yet? Aren't I shining bright with my halo? How come I'm still swimming around in this murky, dirty water? How come I'm still trying to clear this stuff? Uh, you know, and judge, 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 and shame, shame, shame. Uh, but, you know, we can't expect to come onto the earth at this time and expect everything to be all perfect and um, for us to all be in line. And we are here in amongst probably one of the hardest times in human history and our evolution, partially because we, we have a huge population of people on the earth and all of us, uh, including light workers, in fact, light workers probably even more so, are carrying huge amounts of pain, wounding, and suffering from so many past lives and within ourselves and within our DNA, uh, and that is very much being acted out uh, in various ways and forms as we see through, you know, what we do see. And, you know, to say, oh, you know, I have a high vibration now, so I don't attract anything like that and that's not in my life anymore and I've moved past that well good for you that's great um sorry but I think you might be living in a, in a bit of a bubble we came down here to now I heard a, a transmission from beautiful Matt Khan the other day and he described uh this visit to earth as, as basically being in the ghetto of a gangster planet so I love that definition and I think I just laugh my, you know, I almost peed myself with laughter listening to his definition. So, you know, you can't come to earth and, you know, not expect to be touched by what's going on. We are energetically empathic, um, sensitive souls. So we are going to either sponge and pick up or, um, you know, it's very hard not to get affected by what's going on around us when that is the majority that of the experiences of humanity the minority is a very small few and we you know we are few in numbers and um so that makes it even more important that we we don't lose track and lose sight of ourselves and get bogged down in the actual uh illusions and the in the emotional pain and the fears because we our job was to come clean it up not to get you know further in amongst it and get lost in the quicksand and not find our way out so Remembering, you know, uh, I really think the key part of my journey over the last month has been working with my inner child and giving and hearing, or, or not even just my inner child, just those wounded parts of myself that have never really been given the proper voice to be heard, to be acknowledged, to be validated, to be understood, and to be nurtured and loved and given that attention. So, uh, for me personally, and I think uh, many of us, and also I heard Matt Khan talk about this, and I have also used these um, descriptions as well, for when um, the ego can turn into either one or the other, and, and one person can experience both of these polarities within oneself, is when we either make ourselves inferior um, or we make ourselves superior and in order to overcome our deep feelings of unworthiness and abandonment and rejection so uh, you know one person can experience both of those things or um, maybe you know the dominant experience could be and in my case it is a lot of the time uh, inferiority so you know uh, for that experience for a person who feels inferior and undeserving and unworthy due to childhood neglect or abandonment uh, the healing process is really important that it is given full attention to that part of oneself that feels that neglect, that feels that abandonment, that feels that rejection. And I'm not saying this in order to keep re-experiencing the pain, to keep going into that. I'm saying this because <clears throat> that is what how we heal the pain. Not, you know, we're not re-experiencing it in order to re-experience it, just to feel it all over again and continue with being re-traumatized. We are uh, experiencing it and to hear the voice and to give that that voice that attention and that love to hear it say oh my gosh I'm so sorry that you that you've been so neglected all of this time oh no wonder it's been so hard for you in this life 
to get ahead and to do the things that you've wanted to do and to achieve your goals when all the whole time you've been battling and feeling so unloved and so unwanted and so uncared for. That must have been really, really hard for you. And you, I can see how the circumstances in your life have just really worked against you and how unsupported you must feel in this lifetime. Uh, that must be really, really hard. So those are the kind of things that that self-talk involves validation and acknowledgement. That acknowledgement is huge and, and heals a huge portion of one's self doubt or self-neglect or, or feelings of failure or unworthiness. Now we are being pushed into that situation of looking at this these wounds to in order to heal them because while we are still harboring these types of wounds within our being, within our soul cells, within our hearts, minds, emotions and, and thoughts, we cannot come into a space of unconditional love because we are not believing we deserve it. So this is huge. It's a huge part of the journey and it's really important. I know I last year we talked about, oh, you know, we're nearly there and we've done all, most of the work now and we're just about to come into union and, you know, and if I'd said, you know, oh, actually, you know, you've got another whole quite a bit to go there, and most of us probably would have um, put up the white flag and given up. I know I've been very close many times and said, what on earth is going on here? I'm sick of having to go through this again and again, more pain, no thank you, when am I going to get my love, when am I going to get my happiness, when am I going to get the things that I deserve, this is just not fair, um, this is dumb, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what that is, is that's us experiencing ourselves in the duality of the third dimension of the human experience, deeply immersed in it. And, you know, yes, there is a higher perspective that, um, you know, we could jump to in our minds that says, well, actually, you know, that's just an illusion. It's not really real. And we're all just one on some level. And, you know, and you're, you are actually united with your twin no matter what. And you are actually united with, with Christ consciousness and God and love and the universe, no matter what. Well, I can tell you, it sure as hell does not feel like that when you are in the human body <clears throat> experiencing these horrible and devastating and crushing and torturous emotions. So I just want to say that big shout out. I am not sitting up above the sky pretending that, you know, all is well and wonderful and enlightened and happy and love and joyous. Yes, there is that place that can exist. But for those of us that are fully in the cleanup crew and getting our hands dirty, a big shout out. Thank you so much for your work. It does not get acknowledged. It's a thankless task. Um, however, it will you will graduate. You will be promoted. <laughs> I guarantee it. I've been given this indication that your promotion will come soon. I, you know, we may get a sense on some level that we agreed to come in and do a certain amount of cleanup. Um, and you know, one person can only really handle so much. One soul can only handle a certain amount. And I think you know, there comes a time when your soul knows that you've done the work that you needed to do, that you've done your portion of helping your brothers and sisters in the collective to heal and, and you will continue to do so because without having gone through the experience and got your hands dirty and got stuck in the quicksand and, and fallen down the caverns and grazed your knees and fallen flat on your face and had to climb back out again and, and experience what it feels like to, to have that pain of separation or feel the pain of loving someone who does not love you back in the same way. To have to go through that, the worst pain in human existence is what we must do so that we can help others that are coming behind us. Because how will you help them if you do not know how that feels? If you just do it in your mind, it's you've skipped the steps. So uh, this is what I'm talking about. I'm getting real real on it. Um, yeah, so... I do understand completely those that are experiencing the the tumultuous part of this journey. I'm I'm right there with you. I'm I'm at times on that roller coaster where you know when 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 you let go as well and you do that part of it where you surrender and you trust and you're on the roller coaster and you don't know where you're going to end up next. You've just got to trust that you're just going to end up somewhere and you like your tummy everything is dizzy and you 
very disorientating and um, you really don't know where you are and you feel like you've lost parts of yourself and and this process is huge very very huge process that we are doing um, just recently in the last week we've had uh, what I was being shown was a geomagnetic storm that there was amazing solar flares and all sorts going off in the universe there were shifting timelines so you were being asked if you we're ready to get off that timeline and no longer re keep it re-experiencing those same patterns over and over again. Did you learn your lesson? Okay, train's pulling out the station here. You need to be on it. It's going on the next uh, track. And if you don't want to keep meeting, bumping into those same characters again and again, you've got to be on this train because this train's on this track and this timeline's going uh, to this place. So, off, you know, jumping on that train, having to say goodbye and be ready to leave behind things that no longer serve you, really letting go, looking around and saying, do I need all this stuff? Do I need these people? Does that make me feel good? Do these people support me? Do they, you know, when I put myself in that situation, does that feel safe for me? Is that healthy? No. Okay, if it's not, get out of there. You're on the next train, next station, moving on, moving up, um, yeah, putting boundaries in if, if you're needing to as well, to say no, because again, the people that have, uh, had a lifetime of neglect and abandonment in that experience will do their best to, to uh, try and please others in order to gain that validation that they are okay as people and we're trying to get that validation from people that actually do not care about us and do not show us the respect that we deserve so again it's, it's, it's about moving on and moving away and stepping up and to the next level uh, we're not sitting around waiting for things to happen, we're being very active in our journey of doing the actual work, making the changes, making those choices to step out of certain behaviours and do something different and, and you know these are all things that help us on our journey. Um, I mean it's been said it's a cliche that you know if you keep doing the same thing over and over again then you'll be getting the same results, do something different and that will take you out of the place that you're in which can feel um, like there's no hope or there's misery or sadness, a lot of that, it's, it's it really is time to move past that, it really is. Not to judge you when you're in it and you go into it, it's just part of the healing process, but you also want to continue to move on from it and not keep re-experiencing over and over again. So yeah, that's pretty much, I feel, where we've, what we've been, uh, tra you know, traveling through the last month or so. I do have a sense that we are going to be moving into a time of more uh, solid ground. So I feel there's going to be a little bit more stability on the path. And that's going to come through that inner strength. You're going to gain that stability through your own inner strength, through strengthening your whole uh, central nervous system, which is sitting on your spinal column, which... Um, connects into your chakra system which goes up to your brain stem which sends through the messages to your neural pathways that all is well, all is safe, all is stable here um, s containing and stabilizing the emotions so that they're no longer uh, being magnetically uh, <clears throat> pulled into situations that are created to uh, yeah, whereby you're you're feeling that instability, so therefore create you know instability is being created in your life. So coming back in, remembering to do that those meditations with yourself, the healing, self love, the same messages I'm going to repeat probably in all of my my videos because they're just so important to to our hearts for the healing, healing our beautiful hearts. They're so precious, and and healing those parts of us that were wounded and neglected and abandoned we're really working with those parts to integrate them and to give them all the love that they deserve and nurture them and uh, do what we can to keep ourselves safe and stable okay well that I don't want to make this too long so I am going to leave the message there and I am going to send you out all loads and loads of love and, and beautiful healing energy and light uh, from here and I'll talk to you very soon thank you so much for listening okay bye for now <clears throat>